Okay, so in this video we're going to be looking at the third type of proof by induction, and it's proof by induction of inequalities. Okay, um, so starting off, I'm going to talk through the full question, focusing on our step one, two, and three, and then I'll identify the key points at the end of the question. So if you're uh, at the end of the question, yeah. So if you're looking for just the key points in this, uh, the flashcard maybe, maybe just skip to the end of the video. And I'll write it inside a green box here. Okay, so the question says, well, how do we identify that it's an inequality question? Well, quite clearly we can see that there is an inequality in the question. So what we're trying to do is show that the left-hand side is greater than the right-hand side. And all along I've been saying that we're going to do step one, prove true for the smallest allowable n. And the reason I've been saying the smallest allowable n is because eventually there's going to be a restriction. n has to be greater than or equal to 5. So the smallest allowable n in this case is actually 5. So test out what happens. Putting in um, a 5 in for anywhere where you see an n. So on the left hand side we get 2 to the power of 5 which is 35. On the right hand side 5 to the power of 2 which is 25. So therefore it's true for n is equal to 5. Second step, assume true for n is equal to k. Well, what do we do? Simply sub in n is equal or er, n is equal to k, so you'd get 2 to the power of k is greater than k to the power of 2. And as far as I'm concerned, this is 100% true. As far as we care, this is 100% true. Okay, We're actually going to come back to this line in a little bit. So this will be important later on. Step three, prove true for n is equal to k plus one. So anywhere we have a n, sub in k plus one. Okay. Now on the left hand side, so if you can ever simplify the left hand side, do it. Can you simplify this left hand side? Yes, you absolutely can. And splitting it apart like we did in the previous section, Again, using page 21 of the log tables, the top left-hand corner of the very first row of page 21 of the log tables. So I want to show this. This is what I want to show is through. Okay. So the way I consider it then is that you go back to step two. Stop with step three. Go back to this line. Go back to what you know is true. If I were to add one to both sides, it would still be true. If I was to add 2 to both sides, it would still be true. If I was to multiply both sides by 2, it would still be true. So what we try and do is make the left-hand side of step 2 look like the left-hand side of step 3. So what would I need to do? I would need to multiply the left-hand side of step 2 by 2. But I cannot just do it to one side. Okay. So I must multiply both sides by 2. So the trick in the question is to go back to step 2. So go back to step 2. What would, what would you have to do the left-hand side of step 2 to make it look like the left-hand side of step 3? Well, if I know this is true and I multiply both sides by 2, it's still true, and I still multiply both sides by 2, it's still true. So if I do the same thing to both sides, it still holds up and it's still true. Sorry, leave that there, I didn't want to, add it. I just meant to delete the purple. So I'm going to multiply both sides by 2. Okay, that was our assumption. We've multiplied both sides. So as far as I'm concerned, if this is true, then this must be true. Okay. As long as the assumption is true, this must be true. And this is now equal to the left-hand side of step 3. So I'm going to call this 2, two to the power of k is greater than 2k squared. And that's a is greater than b. This is true, 100% true. But that's not what I want to show. want to show... Two, two to the k is greater than. I just can't remember what it was. K squared, k plus one squared. And I'm going to call that a and c. Okay, so I know this is true. 
assuming my assumption is true. And I want to show this is true. So how I go and actually do that is I actually go and show B is greater than C. If B is greater than C, well then it falls into the habit or the pattern that it's A is greater than B is greater than C. So this must be true, which then proves that A is greater than C, which would prove what I want to prove. So it's the right hand side of the modified step two is greater than the right hand side of step three. The right hand side of the modified step two is equal to the right hand side of step three. And I've shown this here again. This is our, it should be, um, oh yes, sorry, this is correct because I've just multiplied it together. This was what my, this was what the left hand side is, it's the modified step two. Okay, modified step two. I know A is greater than B, I want to show A is greater than C, so I actually show B is greater than C, and then A must be greater than C also. So, well, what was A, what was B, what was C? Fill it in, multiply both sides out. Okay. Where can I go from this? Subtract K squared from both sides, subtract 2K from both sides, and subtract 1 from both sides. Change it to further X form. Okay, now, how do I know this is correct? So true as n is greater than or equal to 5, k is greater than or equal to 5. So as long as k is 5 or greater, this must be true. So imagine if you subbed in 5 here, what would you get? 5 minus 1 is 4, 4 squared is 16. So this bracket, the minimum it can be is 16. 16 minus 2 is 14, which is greater than 0. So remember, n is greater than or equal to 5, k is greater than or equal to 5, b is greater than c. This is what we've just shown. b is greater than c. And if b is greater than c, it must also mean a is greater than c. So that's our goal met. End of the question then. True for n is equal to k plus 1, assuming true for n is equal to k. True, we should also say true n is equal to 5. That was the step one. And we've now can say that it's it, the initial statement is true as long as n is greater than or equal to 5 and n is an element of the natural numbers. So the key step then for the question. Okay, so here we have our three steps. Step one, prove true for small as the noble n. Step two, assume true for n is equal to k. Step three, uh, prove true for n is equal to k plus one. Stop. Go back to step two. Make the left hand side of step two look like the left hand side of step three. So in this example, I multiplied both sides by two. But I'm sort of identifying the left hand side as the key tell here. Write down A is greater than B. That's our known now. We want to show whatever was in step three, A is greater than C. Actually go and prove that B is greater than C. That's the or HS, the right hand side of step two is greater than the right hand side of step three. Then we will have actually proved that A is greater than C.